Hi friends, welcome back. Uh, we will discuss the chapter 2 of class 7 NCRT history today. And the title of the chapter is New Kings and Kingdoms. So as the name suggests, this chapter discusses about uh, those major ruling dynasties that emerged in the 7th and uh, 12th centuries. So these dynasties emerged between 7th and 12th centuries in different parts of the subcontinent. So the map given below uh, gives the location of those uh, dynasties. The important uh, ones being Chahamanas or Chauhans and uh, Gurjara Pradiharas, Palas in the east, Rashragudas in the uh, Deccan, then Cholas in the south. Along with them we have Chera and Pandya. Uh, then uh, Chandela here. Also try to remember the location of important rivers. Here we have Ganga and Yamuna here. And Kanoji is uh, an important uh, place in the medieval history. Many war, uh, wars were fought to establish control over Kanoj. Uh, the tripartite struggle that is uh, famous in the medieval history was fought among Gurjara Pradiharas, Palas and Rashtra Gudas to establish control over Kanoj because Kanoj was an important uh, uh, center of agricultural and commercial production. It had a vast fertile land uh, irrigated by Ganga and Yamuna. So these are the things you should take away from this map. Now moving on to the next section, the emergence of new dynasties. How these new dynasties emerge? We have seen that towards the end of the ancient uh, times, the there was a decline of the centralized empires. And we have also seen about the Samanda system in the classic NCRT. So what was that? Samanda system is uh, a military system in which the warrior chief maintained army locally and they supplied these army men to the king for fighting wars. In return, king would allocate them certain land as grants and a tax from these land can be collected for the maintenance of army by these Samandas. So this was the uh, Samanda system. But with the uh, with the time, the, some of these Samandas gained power and wealth. And they declared themselves to be Maha Samanda or Maha Mandaleshwara. So what you mean by Maha Mandaleshwara? That is a possible MCQ. So Maha Mandaleshwara means warrior chiefs who attained prominence. And they started asserting themselves and tried to challenge the existing uh, rulers. Uh, exam there were different ways in which new dynasties emerged. Some of them performed sacrifices to attain Kshatriyahut. Because according to the Varna system, only those who uh, only those who are Kshatriya by birth could rule the country. So many people tried to overcome these through different methods. Some of them tried to perform uh, rituals or sacrifices with the help of Brahmanas. And some other used their military skills to attain Kshatriyahut. So, the Rashtrakudas in the Deccan is an example of attaining Kshatriyahut through performance of rituals. For example, Dendi Gurga, he was a Rashtrakuda chief. He threw overthrew the Chalukya overlord and performed a ritual called Hiranyagarbha. Hiranyagarbha is a ritual performed by uh, Danti Durga of Rashtrakuda with the help of Brahmins so that he can attain the Kshatriyahut uh, to rule the region. So in other cases, men like Kadamba Mayura Sharman and uh, Gurjara Pradihara Harishchandra uh, who gave up their traditional professions and used their military skills to establish kingdoms in Karnataka and Rajasthan respectively. So there were different methods adopted by people to attain Kshatriyahut. And uh, next section discuss about the administration in kingdoms. Even though these kings declared or adopted uh, titles such as 
ಮಹಾರಾಜಾದಿರಾಜ ತ್ರಿಭುವನ ಚಕ್ರವರ್ತಿ ದೇ ವೇರ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಪವರ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಾಮಂದಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ವೇರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಸಾಮಂದಾಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಇನಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಪವರ್ ವಿತ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ದಿ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ರೇಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೇಸ್ಡ್ ತ್ರೂ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೆವೆನ್ಯೂ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದಿ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟೇಮ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಇಟ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವೆಟ್ಟಿ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಲೇಬರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಡಮೈ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೆವೆನ್ಯೂ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪಾಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಆನ್ ಎಮ್ ಸಿ ಕ್ಯೂ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಮೀನ್ ಬೈ ವೆಟ್ಟಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮಿಡೀವಿಯಲ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಲೇಬರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಫೋರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಫಿನಾನ್ಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟು ಫೈಟ್ ವಾರ್ಸ್ ವೈ ವಾರ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ವಾರ್ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ವೇರ್ ಅಕ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲಂಡರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಟು ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ರೂಟ್ಸ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅಪ್ಟೇನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಫೈಟಿಂಗ್ ವಾರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೆರಿಡಿಟ್ರಿ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅವೇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಏರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಮೀನ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಗುಪ್ತ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಹರಿಸೇನ ಇನ್ ಅಲಹಾಬಾದ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತೀಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ರೂಲರ್ಸ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೆಪಿಕ್ಟ್ ದಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಇನ್ ವಿಕ್ಟೋರಿಯಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಾಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ವೇ ಆರ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಪರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಾಪರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಮಿಡೀವಲ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಎ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ನಾಗಭಟ್ಟ ಎ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ನಾಗಭಟ್ಟ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರ ಕಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ವಾಸ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಳಿಯೋರ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅವೇ ಟೇಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ದಿ ದಿ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ದ ಚೋಲಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ರಿಸೀವ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಬೀಟಲ್ ಲೀವ್ಸ್ ಓವನ್ ಕ್ಲೋತ್ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಹೂ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ರೂಮ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೇಕಡ್ ಬ್ರಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ರೂಮ್ಸ್ ಓರ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಡ್ ರೂಮ್ಸ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಬಿಲ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಬೇಕಡ್ ಬ್
the cano control over canoes was very much essential so another feature of those times was that the rulers tried to demonstrate their power and resources by building large temples so if somebody wanted to challenge another king or acquire wealth they had to plunder these temples the most famous one who did it continuously was mahmud ghasni of afghanistan who often raided india uh, not india in the uh, existing sense but the subcontinent who who plundered different Uh, temples in the subcontinent almost every year for uh, the the wealth they had so it included somnath temple of gujarat so muhammad ghasni used uh, the wealth of the temples he raided to build a city in ghasni and it mentions about the next para mentions about al baruni who wrote an account of the subcontinent in an arabic work called kitabul hind so kitabul hind the author is al baruni and it is an account of the subcontinent and the chahamanas or the chauhans the most famous one is prithviraja 3 who defeated muhammad gori in 1191 but in the ne- very next year he was defeated by gori in the battle of terrain so you try to locate where is this terrain in the present day map and now we will discuss the south indian kingdom of cholas so the chola uh, cholas were there but it became large enough to be called as an empire only around 9th century in the middle of the 9th century so it was uh, the vijayalaya who belonged to the cholas from urayur who defeated muttarayar to establish uh, his kingdom in tanjavur and it was vijayalaya who uh, built a temple for goddess nishum nishumbha sudini so who built the nishumbha sudini temple then the answer will be vijayalaya of cholas later chola kings expanded the kingdom by defeating pandyas and pallava territories rajaraja 1 is the most powerful chola ruler and his son rajendra 1 raided the gangetic valley sri lanka and countries of southeast asia so that means he had a well developed navy for uh, having such expeditions the uh, the temples and bronze sculpture of chola times is world famous it mentions about temples of tanjavur and gangai konda cholapuram so now you have to link these uh, temples with current developments for example brihadeeshwara temple in tanjavur was in news recently because of the debate around using agama and tirumurai rituals in uh, temple matters so there was a, a debate and it uh, became a d- debate around the use of uh, sanskrit versus tamil it became a language debate so you try to know what do you mean by agama agama are set of hindu ideas about establishment of temples what deity the kind of sacrifices to be performed such details are provided in agamas tirumurai is a uh, collection of hymns in praise of lord shiva so try to or read further about it a, an mcq can be asked from here and chola temples often became nuclei of settlements centers of craft etc it, it was not just about spirituality it was the centers of activity economic activity and uh, social life the picture given is the temple at gangai konda cholapuram look at the uh, structure and temples were not only places of worship they were the hub of economic social and cultural life as well and the chola bronze images are considered as the most finest in the world and it mentions that while most images were of de- deities sometimes images were made of devotees as well so this is a particular information try to find the names of such images of devotees 
usually we worship deities uh, here it mentioned that sometimes images were made of devotees so find the names and the role of agriculture and irrigation the cholas invested heavily in the expansion of ir irrigation and for the for the more production in the agriculture so they used canals tanks wells etc and boosted agricultural production in many areas two crops were grown in an year say they used wells they had rainwater harvesting structures and the next disc uh, discussion is about the administration of the empire it mentions about ur nad and sabha sabha belonged to brahmins and ur and nad was about non brahmin peasants the settlements of peasants were known as ur ur in tamil and they became prosperous with the spread of our irrigation agriculture and the collection of ur is known as nad and it had it performed administrative functions including dispensing justice and collecting taxes and vellala is the caste that had uh, land in uh, a considerable amount of agricultural land they were the rich peasants they had much control over this nadu and uh, nadu was under the supervision of the central chola government so we had uh, chola below them nadu and and the lowest one is ur and the chola kings gave these vellala caste of the rich peasants as muvanda velan muvanda velan means velan or peasant serving the three kings three kings mean chera pandya chola they were known as muvandars uh, and other title is arayar and arayar and muvanda velan is the uh, title given to the rich land owners of chola empire so uh, this was the administration related uh, facts of chola empire we will also discuss about sabha the next box mentions about the different types of land existed vellanvage is the land of non brahmana then there is brahmadeya shala boga land for the maintenance of school then devadana you try to remember all these names okay this can be asked directly now the next section discuss about a uh, sabhas sabhas means the land that was given given to brahmanas were known as brahmadeya so in order to look after these lands there was an assembly of brahmins known as sabha and they recorded their uh, decisions in inscriptions they worked as uh, worked as a uh, worked in committees an association of traders are known as nagarams so you learn the word ur nadu and sabha and nagaram these are the key words you should be uh, learning and from the uttarameerur inscription uh, that was found in chengalpet in tamil nadu we get the details of sabhas so we get the details of sabha from uttarameerur in chengalpet district and sabha had separate committees to look after different work and this box discuss about the criteria of uh, allocating or criteria to be members of the sabha it says only the owners of land could be the members and those who aged between 35 and 70 and those who had knowledge of vedas that means women cannot be the members of sabha why because women and shudra were not allowed to learn vedas if any one has been a member of any committee in the last 3 years he cannot become a member of another committee so such arrangements were there to ensure that it is uh, accountable to the governed so this is a rudimentary form of governance and a kind of decentralized form of governance we had in the medieval times so there there is another mcq possible here what are the qualifications required to be a member of sabha in medieval uh, chola empire 
then it mentions about a work called periya puranam which discuss about the lives of ordinary men and women so remember this name periya puranam so this is all about this uh, discussion thank you you can do the exercise exercises yourself we have discussed all these points uh, so go through the exercises then the match for match the following gurjara pradiharas uh, gujarat and rajasthan rashtra kudas in western deccan palas in the bengal and cholas in tamil nadu so next uh, questions we have already discussed try to write down the answers on your own so this is all about this discussion thank you